Hi, welcome. This is Masala Crowd. I'm Tom. This is Tino. And we are going to talk about some Indian movies for you guys. You can find us anywhere on the social media under the hashtag uh, and the at Masala Crowd. And you can find us on the web masalacrowd.com. And we are your two favorite German guys who talk about Indian movies. Is that not right? That's absolutely correct. And I think we should start with Beast because we have two movies today and there's two entertaining movies and one of them is actually pretty good and the other one is just pretty entertaining. <laughs> It's definitely a mix. Yeah, talk about Beast. Uh, this is a Tamil movie and uh, this movie has Talapathi Vijay in it and he is the big star of the show and uh, you probably... Uh, know him from other movies uh, that he did with Nelson, right? Uh, I think he did a couple yeah. a couple with him before. And uh, yeah, so he's, he, he's a big thing. He's a big thing in India. Yeah. So, and I only saw a doctor from Nelson. It's like a black comedy. And I think he has the same tone of black comedy as well in Beast, but it's a little bit more in the background. And I think the, yeah, the black humor in Beast is a little bit tone deaf at times because... Yeah, from a German or from our standpoint, it's really tough to mix a ISIS hostage situation in a shopping mall with some very lighthearted comedy, with some romance and with some beheadings. So that's a pretty mixed bag, but I enjoyed it overall because it's a pretty mixed bag. In, in, indeed, and uh, it's really interesting to look at this movie of um, when you look at it as a whole. From the trailer, you don't get the whole vibe of the movie, in my opinion, but you mm -hmm. see that the movie gives you, uh, like the, as you said, the romance. We have the action, we have the drama, uh, we have the comedy, and it mixes it, it mixes all uh, all of it together, which is uh, interesting, but makes it kind of or gives you the feeling of uh, the movie doesn't know where it wants to go. And I think that is a problem with the movie that made me didn't enjoy it as much as I did our second movie we're going to talk about later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so too, because it didn't feel like it knows where it's, want, uh, where it's going to, but it also feels like it's never going to leave the shopping mall. So you're <laughs> staying inside for almost two hours. And mm -hmm. I feel that they always made the most out of this limited space that there's are inside. But I think you have to totally accept the, the inconsistent and very insane terms and conditions that Beast came up with because it's... So there was this one sequence where they have to like... Uh, where they are talking to the terrorists about this red box thingy and where the hostage is trying to to uh, confront the terrorists with just new ideas and new stories from every minute to minute. And I think this was the most hilarious part of the whole movie. But it was also way too long because like Vicha is trying to to cut his ropes with a class of a, uh, with a... Yeah, what was it? Was it a lens? I think it was a <sighs> lens of a of glasses. Oh, oh yeah, 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 they, yeah, they broke ropes. the lens. Now I yeah. know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. they, they had this, uh, they, yeah, it was a lens of a glass and uh, the the one lady, the lady, the lady cop, which doesn't really get to do anything really. I thought there was going to be more of a story to her. And yeah. Uh, yeah. and she was introduced before that she's like refusing to, to get married to a guy because she wants to go to the police school and doing all this stuff and, and to the police academy. And then she was introduced like she could be our, yeah, basically like our heroine. And then she's basically doing nothing, or almost nothing, because Vichay is basically doing everything. He's just like a one-man right. army. Yeah. I think there, there was, uh, for, for myself, uh, the movie was at its best when we saw the action uh, of, of Vijay. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what he did in terms of chor choreography and uh, like coolness. But even though he has like this, this, this puppy, puppy face kind of, you know, even, even though he has the, yeah. the gray beard and everything, but he looks very, uh, uh, very much uh, like, a, um, like a good and warm person, not like a straight yeah. up killer. And uh, yeah. And Yeah, and as we just saw the scene in the trailer again, would you ever have thought that this is like a the the head of a terrorist that's flying outside of the window? It's crazy. Because right? I, I saw this, this scene in the trailer and I was like guessing, okay, what could this be? Because it looks like really, mm -hmm. really tall. It looks more like it's some kind of a 
they're almost like a meteorite or something like that. Yeah. And then you find out, okay, it's just a, it's just the head of a terrorist. In, and indeed, indeed, and it's a, it's 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 an interesting movie and uh, gives uh, um, also some some facts and in, in terms of where you wonder how 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 is this happening in real life? Is it is it a comedy aspect? Like for example, when 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 he's like what we've just seen in a trailer here, the the part where uh, with the, with the shield where they. Mm -hmm. where they like shield him and he shoots like through the middle but nothing hits him uh, miraculously yeah. and it's like it's like okay we can just we're just gonna take that here but um yeah really uh, really interesting thing i thought there's gonna be um I, i or i wish that it would have been a little bit more serious uh it gives you a kind of diehard vibe and it gives mm -hmm. you uh also some other movies mixed all in one Uh, he even like he has, he has the he has the shirtless scene uh, no not shirtless I'm sorry the the, the tank top scene and mm -hmm. uh, he even takes off his shoes and I was waiting for like the more diehard uh, moments uh, also they went to like a uh, 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 like the air vents and stuff like that so that was kind of fun to see and uh, yeah um, interesting yeah. stuff yeah. but then and they're paying tribute to Terminator and Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. with exactly, the sequence yeah. where they're downstairs and. And so also, there's a lot of like, also with the gun, tributes with the, in this movie. Yeah, with the when he flips it and uh, turns it around uh, yeah, on him, like shotgun. when he reloads yeah. the, the shotgun. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, that that happened a lot. But you you have these cool action scenes which pay homage and which which is um, the best part of the movie, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And then you have uh, crazy dancing scenes, um, which are totally in a dream world. And Uh, I was I was wondering myself. I, I didn't get an answer from a friend of mine who is Tamia, and uh, um, I, I asked her where this uh, where this Arabic influence comes from in in that part of India. Uh, the, the Tamil is is it the south or is it the north? I'm not sure. I think the south is K KGF and stuff like that. That's south, mm -hmm. right? And the other part is north, not right? sure as well. So please, everybody who's watching this, please bear in mind that we just discovered Indian movies for us. So please be kind with us in the comments and you can explain everything to us because we are very eager to learn. But there's a lot of for us to basically dig up on too. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, as you can see, you had like uh, uh, in, in another scene. But by the way, this this what this this picture, um, the, the main actress, uh, Puya Hegde, I think that's how mm -hmm. she or Hedge mm -hmm. could also be. I mean, with the British Hedge. influence. Yeah. Hedge. Uh -huh. I, I watched some interviews to be sure. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, Puya, uh, she looks she reminded, reminded me a lot of uh, Princess Leia in the slave bikini scene with Jabba the Hutt mm -hmm. with, with the colors and everything. So um, yeah. that's that. And then also uh, in the other scenes, as I mentioned before, the Arabic influence, as you can see, uh, the dancers, the backup dancers there with, uh, mm -hmm. with the uh, uh, turban and uh, the outfits uh, doing with the boombox, uh, doing the dancing here. Uh, I sometimes wonder, see, that there's also a question for the audience there, uh, the, everybody who's watching, where, um, where, where do these influences come from in terms of the choreography? That would be in, very interesting to me. Um, mm -hmm. My girlfriend actually said she, uh, she she said this is all basically Bolly, Bollywood and the way they dance is an homage to Michael Jackson. I don't know if that's true, but I could see that. And like 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 when you look at Beat It and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think so. I think there's much more to it. But as Probably, we just yeah. mentioned, please enlighten us. So please tell us everything we need to know. You can link other videos to us where we can learn more. And where you just mentioned the main actress, so in the beginning she felt or she seemed very self-confident because at this wedding scene mm. she's basically so he feels very insecure. But when they are in the shopping mall and he's like back to work basically as a spy and as mm. a soldier, as he self-proclaims he's, him, he's a, as he's he a proclaims security himself. guard. Yeah. Security guard. I mean, we, we were joking. Yeah. We were so, joking around in the cinema like that. He's like Paul. Uh, Paul was it Paul Mart? Paul Blart. Paul Blart. Blart. Malcolm, yeah. exactly. That it kind of had that yeah. feeling, and uh, with the comedy that that it uh, provided mm -hmm. us with, and um, yeah. then later on, <laughs> it turned a little more action. But um, yeah, yeah, it, it was it was some really interesting stuff. Do you have a favorite scene from from the movie? Do you know? So I really like the six minute scene where he's trying to get uh, uh, his wrists free again. Yeah, yeah. So when they are all talking about this, because it doesn't make any sense. 
And I like one scene toward the end because when he's at Pakistan mm -hmm. and where he's going to basically yeah, capture the yeah. ISIS it was, leader. It was in the Kashmir region, the, just to, to yeah. just to make sure and the, then, the, the Pakistan Kashmir region. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And then one guy says that he's that the that they are like basically intruded by a spy and that mm -hmm. he's there for almost uh, for over a month and learned everything. And then you see that he's like parked his airplane right outside of the of the ISIS uh, of yeah. the ISIS camp. What? So the, How? There was like How? an F-16 airplane for a month, and then he arrived with his plane. He parked it just outside, and then he stood there for a month. Uh, how? So, how did this plane get there? I don't know, but and you showed the beast uh, poster before, where he's actually wearing yeah, this yeah. Uh, pilot outfit. So I think this is almost yeah, like a pretty mask, big yeah. spoiler because if we hadn't seen the scenes in the trailer before and we were yeah. like, okay, there's still the 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 airplane part is still missing, we wouldn't have guessed that this would be heaven at, at all. Basically, so, basically, it, almost the whole scene is in there in the trailer. Yeah. You get so much of that. It's 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 really crazy that they put like all that stuff that is basically at the end of the movie in yeah, there. But they didn't put any element of the smart sequence in it where he's like driving around in the shopping mall with the smart. Yeah, and we only see also, it in the, in the elevator, right? Yeah. And what's also very baffling, at least for me, is that, that they are so... But when I read it right, they almost rebuilt the whole shopping mall. Mm -hmm. But you have like real real brands in there. So you have something like Starbucks, you have Mango, you have a lot of Hello Kitty, you have a lot of really ex also brands that exist in real life. And I don't think that they are cool with a movie that's playing into an ISIS hostage situation. So that's yeah. something that would that's really interesting for to me as well, if they are like did any clearance on that, if they can use the brands or something like that, or if they were just, okay, there's a mall, there are stores inside of it, so that's, yeah, that's bad yes. luck for them, we are doing this movie now. Yeah, you gotta wonder if uh, how, how that happened, and if they, mm -hmm. uh, if there's gonna be repercussions, or, I, 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 yeah, I, I don't think as well that they didn't get paid or anything, so um, this, is, this is an interesting move, in terms of licensing, obviously, because Mm -hmm. That's uh, always not an uh, easy issue uh, with uh, movies and, uh, and things like that. Um, my favorite scene, by the way, was when mm -hmm. uh, he when he was on rollerblades. That was the craziest action yeah. scene okay. I've ever yeah. seen on rollerblades. How in the world? <laughs> who came up with that concept? I want to know more. I want to do interviews with the choreographers of that movie. Who came up with this uh, <laughs> rollerblade scene? And, and the crazy stunts he did. It was it was incredible. Uh, did do you think he he did it himself or did he have some double? Not so. From the way it was edited, I think he had a double. So mm. I'm not familiar if he's doing stunts by himself. Yeah. But I also liked the scene where he's stepping like two ISIS terrorists in front of the captive audience. And then he plays that in order to fake out like the second victim. Mm. And then he just tells to the hostages, this is all normal. And it's basically nothing is to all normal about this movie because every every sequence or every attempt they are trying to get rid of the terrorists, it's mm. totally strange and totally random. And it's so, yet yeah, so complicated while they are trying to get rid of the terrorists. And you have this constant see, uh, the scenes with the, it was the RAW agents because he's basically like a retired spy and worked for a mm. special forces unit where the, minister is also attending and he's like trying to manipulate everybody because there's a big plot going mm. on and a lot of scheming and a lot of intrigues but this was also so obvious played so there's one guy that's always saying no you can't do that and then after two hours they're like okay he's trying to like like gaslight us all the time maybe he's in with this as well so that's really really strange because it felt so so weird that there's no real so there was no real villain of course we have the leader of the terrorists but he was not basically a villain he was just there yeah it is. so i think he had one yeah i mean mm -hmm. the reason was i think uh because of his brother right because he was the brother of uh the yeah, yeah, main he wanted villain to free his, 
it, you wanted to free his brother, but so this is the best plan they can come up with. So you want to get a terrorist free from prison, and the best thing you can come up with is like uh, taking a whole shopping ma but, mall hostage. So yeah, I, um, I, I don't know if I if I heard you saying or talking about the 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 angle of the prime minister because they work with the with oh, no, no, I'm sorry the the guy who wanted to be the prime minister yeah. was actually yeah. also the father of the of the wanted to be police woman yeah yeah so yeah, yeah. And, but i never understood if he wanted them to be killed because it was always like yeah if they die that's just i do it for the country because it almost felt like he plotted a very complicated yeah, yeah, scheme yeah. to get his wife and his daughter murdered so this was very confusing for me as well i think i think he didn't know because they probably would just went out for this uh, for this arranged yeah. wedding and then uh um It just happened because he had to hurry up. He, he had no time yeah. to tell so him. So a, a lot of stuff just yeah, happened yeah. because we haven't even talked about uh, fi fi uh, finance. No, what it's called? Finance? Of the girl he falls in love with? Oh, the fiancé, you mean? Or, or fiancé, sorry, yeah. 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 Who is just there as well. So everybody's just at the shopping mall. Everybody is course. needed to be there. Of course, they are there. So you have what, two what comic kind of relief question? characters. Yeah. So, so oh, yeah. yeah, the script is, I think it's sometimes very weak and sometimes it's just like drifting away from the whole plot and then it's shifting from one scene to another. But I like the fact that the movie becomes very unpredictable by that. So if you would ask uh, audience before the movie, if they would think, is there a scene in the movie that's, probably better than any action scene in Top Gun 2. Most of the audience would say, no, we are watching like a musical and a rom-com mm -hmm. and it's playing inside a shopping mall. So yep, indeed, indeed. It, it has a lot it has a lot to offer and it's definitely uh, something he's like this. Because I'm and not a politician. Not a politician, exactly. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. this, this movie has a, a, a lot to offer in many different directions. But overall, uh, we would come to some fun facts for you guys um, that we have found out about the movie and that we liked. And then we will give you our rating in Masala Crowd Bowls um, of this movie. Um, Dino, you found something out um, about, about this one. I mean, we see the trailer numbers here, 53 million views. I don't know, that's yeah. probably not the yeah, actual so number that was anymore, basic. No, I think this has like increased a lot mm -hmm. and so this is also like a fun fact and a sad fact at the same time because uh, when when Vichai uh, uh, announced the movie basically it was like the yeah the top Indian entertainment tweet of 2021 but when it come to came to the cinemas now it was basically like a huge box office flop Yeah. And we will talk about the movie that's basically responsible for that <laughs> in a few minutes. But this also shows that just because you have a lot of buzz and hype generated, that it doesn't necessarily show at the box office records. So that's something I think nobody really expected before that. So mm -hmm. I think everybody was pretty sure that KGF2 would be a huge success as well. But that, that beast will be like, yeah, like a really disappointing outcome at the box office i think that's sad and there won't be any beast too i guess uh probably not but uh, probably some other movies with vj in it so uh we yeah. cannot cannot go wrong with that i guess and uh yeah. yeah uh before we move over let's give you our masala crowd rate tino you can start off, off let's do a five bowls max okay so i think it's like three balls because it wasn't a good movie but it was very entertaining so that's something i really like about indian movies even if you think okay they are quite shitty they are always a lot of fun so yeah speak speaking of that fact when you look at uh when you look at the uh, the people that uh go to these movies or or Let's let's frame it uh, let's frame it differently. The people that I want uh, to go with to the movie, it's it's really hard mm -hmm. to get them because they think always yeah. it's like all about dancing and singing, and they don't know about the action. And the action is really great choreographed and can yeah. uh, can go along all these Hollywood productions or uh, other Western productions. Um, 
which uh, should people or people should know about and um, yeah my masala crowd bowl rating is also three of five and i had a good time it was a mixed bag uh, uh, um, overall and i think you get a good image of what we think about that movie mm -hmm. now let's move over to our second movie of the day which is uh, um, yeah, as we mentioned, very did very good at the box office. I think it's about 120 million or even a little bit more worldwide right now, which is KGF mm -hmm. Chapter yeah. Two, and I had a really great time watching this. I, I, um, I uh, Tino, Tino helped me to get into uh, the actual screenings of these movies to actually go, mm -hmm. and it wasn't hard to to get me there. And Triple uh, R was the first one that I saw. And uh, I had such a good time, so I went again to KGF Chapter 2. But before I watched KGF Chapter 1 at home, really recent, and it is an incredible uh, double uh, feature, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Yeah. And spoiler alert, in this case, there will be Chapter 3. But how that's going to happen, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I wonder if they're going to do a prequel style or whatever, but um, yeah. it's going to be really interesting. Mm -hmm. I think so too. And I have seen KGF Chapter 1, I think like, two or three years ago when I found out or when I realized that there are a lot of Indian movies I actually tend to like or mm -hmm. that I actually made me interested in watching more stuff from India. So, and then I was really, yeah, then I stumbled upon the, the YouTube video of KGF1, which has like 500 million views. Mm -hmm. So this is like a three hour movie and it has 500 million views. And that's, for a German with like 82 million people in Germany, that's always his numbers. They are always so, so massive. So yeah. whenever we see a trailer coming out, it has like 30 million views within 24 hours. And the German movie will never have like more than one or two millions within one or two months. Exactly. So that's always like a totally different league when it comes to mass appeal. And of course, when it comes to epic pictures, epic images as well so yeah. i was really blessed away by kgf2 as well and we are also not used to this yeah to the to the loudness of the movies yeah that's because just... they're like like tremendously louder than a normal <laughs> or like a hollywood movie would be played in german cinemas it's way louder yeah, let's let's talk about it here in a second um, because I got mm -hmm. a couple of good stories for that. And um, let's talk about the, the the plot of KGF one real quick first. Yes, we have uh, our main actor uh, Yash who portrays Rocky, um, and Rocky. I mean, I, lo I love the song from the first uh, um, first movie that made it into the second movie as well, uh, Salam Rocky Bye, which is a great great song. I love that one. And yeah, he is he's a like a small town criminal gangster. We see a little bit of his. Um, origin story uh, where he comes from and why he does things uh, in, in a certain way and he gives back to children and he's uh, like taking care of his people and that's what we get uh, also in in the movie he has like he has a mission to do something he uh, doesn't get it right away and then he lands in the in the kgf in the cola gold fields and um there he is um he's finding out what it's like who who's in who's in charge here who's the boss um who is who he needs to basically take out and um um to, to to not take over but to fulfill his mission but he also in in, in this way in the first movie he finds he finds kind of like his um his true calling i would say uh, when it comes to mm -hmm. uh when it comes to the aspect of um what 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 we see in the second part now and the second part is uh where when he uh, takes over or you know takes over the, the gold fields and uh yeah he grows stronger he is the boss of all the bad guys now he's like the 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 ba the bai uh that's um that's an indian i think kind of like lord um that's why the song salam rocky bai yeah uh, <laughs> So he's like the 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 lord, the the ruler of those gangsters and of the of the gold fields, and he does everything and speeds speeds everything up, and he wants a fast resolution to his uh, supremacy, and uh, yeah, he gets threatened by the government, he gets threatened by other gangsters who try to plot against him, and one in particular, which is Adira, uh, the I think was it the brother or uncle of uh, what was the f the first villain's name? Uh, Gad Gadura. 
something like that. I'm sorry that that's we something like that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's it's very close. Uh, uh, something like that, and um, yeah, and that's that's really interesting. Um, what they what they what they made out of this here, and what I like about these kind of movies that they they stick to one theme. That's why I like them better. Um, especially KGF uh, does that. Sticks to straight up action it's over the top over the top action which uh, is uh, or rivals superhero action in my in my opinion because we have scenes which are physically uh, nonsense and uh, it's it's a lot of hyper masculinity that is rooted in um kind of like a female perspective in terms of when we look at the president of india in the second one which when we look at the um, the women in his life or when it comes to the mother and the girlfriend and uh, yeah, which I also find interesting here is always uh, in Indian movies that they never really kiss or, or seldomly kiss or come close mm -hmm. to each other. It's like a different kind yeah. of relationship between men and women. I don't know if that has to do with uh, like a religious background that they don't show that on TV like they do in a Western world, but uh, it's really interesting. And so from my understanding, it's often shown in the dancing sequence or at least they get closer to each exactly, other. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, physical contact but in the real world or like in the story itself then it's really really almost never happening so for example we both watch sahu as well mm -hmm. and there's always the kiss but in the same moment she got shot and you're like no they will kiss and you're like what the fuck will happen then but then it doesn't come even to the kiss so that's always interesting and i'm very curious about the reasons for that as well because that's something in european cinema basically everything goes yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's something about of Even... course it keeps the the romance level high because it's almost more romantic if they haven't kissed but mm. yeah even like cgi penises in the northman yes <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and that's something of course so when it comes to romance in kgf chapter two it's yeah it's highly debatable and of course the uh, the representation of women in the movie is really weak but mm. i think that it's like a gangster movie and it's almost like scarface or something like that it's just showing how he gets more and more powerful exactly and yeah. not and how he gets basically towards it's his goals and it's, basically when the and he starts with it and he basically calls Rina that she's his entertainment mm -hmm. and you think okay this is almost like a rapey undertone to it mm -hmm. and then the story continues and the rapey undertone exists for like five to ten minutes but then he tries or like he he transform into almost like a gentleman Mm -hmm. And then she falls in love, but it feels a little bit like a Stockholm syndrome. What's basically going on from a relationship standpoint for the first, you know, at least for the first part of the movie. Afterwards, mm -hmm. I can believe it more that she's really falling in love with him. And what, and she, I think she also falls in love what he's doing for the people at the KGF. Mm -hmm. So that she thinks that he's more like a messiah or savior for the poor people that are living there. But basically, he's just using them to become the richest guy in the world. So yeah, yeah. So he's he's basically trying to be a tough gangster <laughs> and a messiah at the same time. Exactly, and it's like it, it feels uh, very much. Uh, now play some music. We oh no, no, we're not playing some music, but it feels like this. <laughs> so cheesy, exactly. <laughs> when it comes to those <laughs> love scenes, and it's uh, really interesting, but. Um, a lot of great quotes come from this. People were in the in the screening, uh, in, in the super loud screening, uh, where mm -hmm. I actually wrote my uh, my friend who, who works at the cinema. I was like, "Hey, could you turn it down a little bit?" And then she was she was right back. <laughs> oh no! If if none of the other people complain, uh, you're out of luck. And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> and then, but she told me later because they were at at the, at the same uh, like a little bit of time difference there, but they had uh, different showings. And um, and the second one, people actually actually more people came and asked if they could turn it down a little bit, and uh, <laughs> they, they did. So that was kind of interesting to see. But um, yeah, so so much for that. And um, I want to say was the story. Um, I really liked the action. I really liked, and I think this is an overall great movie. And I think the second one yeah. is better than the first one, in my opinion. Yeah, and I think so too. Yes. One of the iconic scenes here is uh, definitely violence, violence, violence. I don't like it. I avoid. 
he doesn't like it yeah and this is one of the great scenes in this movie where where uh it comes to that and uh yeah he also has like i don't know the 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 the, the quotes the quotes go on forever like also also this one i really enjoyed one he is the biggest criminal he is the biggest businessman this is the biggest national issue the biggest national yeah. issue and i think they pointed it out really well uh what it means um or what the cola uh, the, the yeah. gold fields meant for india to that point i think they closed that after 9 11 and e even mm -hmm. though there was still gold there in in, in uh, the real life um mm -hmm way to uh how how the gold fields were handled yeah. and yeah. uh yeah and i, mm -hmm. and I like so also the dialogue there everything in this movie starts in life so for example there's one sequence where rena feels hot mm -hmm. and he's just getting a helicopter to blow air at her because nobody is like yeah, 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 yeah. eating the helicopter is just summoned because she feels hot so that's the level of romance in the movie and mm. the level of violence and the level of action is all way over the top but it feels very natural because everything is way over the top mm. and rocky bias over the top as well so so you would never see like a european or hollywood movie where there would be just like a two minute sequence where he's using a big gun i call, think he called it big mama or it was called Big Mama, something like that. Yeah, the, where, where a big gun is mounted on something and then it's just shot for two minutes to completely demolish a police station. That's yeah. something a lot of I, our Western cinema fears to or shies off because it's not subtle enough. But yeah. when you watch an action movie, you don't want any kind of subtle action exactly. elements you want. Yeah. He looks so like Scarface in that scene. I just pulled that up for the people to see. That's the mm -hmm. suit he's wearing, the the white with the black on top there, with yeah. the black shirt. And then, uh, yeah, the the fun thing at the end, he lighted uh, his cigarette with the with the gun, obviously with the hot yeah. uh, uh, muzzle. And this is uh, <laughs> this was so and that's, so a, that's a really fun. big hero or more like anti-hero moment. Yeah, because I also like that the. So basically the movie always manipulates the viewer because of course he's a villain, but what's the alternative to him? So when you see the, For the people, Indian yeah. prime, yeah, so the Indian prime minister behaves like a villain as well when she's basically like bombarding Burma just to send a message to, to Rocky. So that's also larger than life, but it also gets like a certain, wipe to the movie that's really a lot at stake because mm. they basically want to yeah they want to burn down the whole kgf and so one of the few complaints i read about the movie was that the editing was like too fast or maybe like too shaky but i really really enjoyed the editing as well and mm. i read about this 19 year old guy that was making the editing because he made a trailer and showed it to the director and the director was so impressed that he basically gave him the opportunity mm. to edit the complete film so that's awesome. so amazing that there's somebody hey i got a blockbuster and millions of people will watch it but i trust you to cut this movie to edit this movie even if you have never edited a feature film before yeah so and i think that's very that's... interesting how how they did that and how they um give you this this uh, give it back to the to the little people let's put it this way yeah. um the the movie cost like 13 and a half million 14 million um yeah. translated it, it, was it euros or dollars 12 dollars probably right uh, dollars yeah yeah and the yeah. movie made already as i mentioned in the beginning 120 million and worldwide and i yeah. think that's really uh, cool to see that this kind of movie and it uh, makes so much money worldwide uh, and w in the uk charts it was on top uh, was it in, how how you remember I it, think was like, it was like i think charts. because they are the the different language versions mm -hmm. so basically they have like different position but i think it was on 7 12 and 13 so that's really really big and and yash when he teased again kgf chapter 3 also said that the world is our territory now mm -hmm. because more and more even like like magazines like Variety and Hollywood Reporter realize, okay, there will be a new wave of Indian movies coming to international cinema because RRR was something almost nobody on a big scale was expecting that it will hit like this. So there was... Hey, even, come on. Got the catchiest... Yeah, the, the almost catchiest song. Yeah. I mean, uh, Salam Rocky yeah. Bai is number one, but uh, yeah. uh, Nacho Nacho is definitely... Yeah, of course. Yeah. On point. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there were even magazines like Slash Film that wrote yeah. like, okay, it's the biggest surprise. So there's basically a movie that's just 
being like number one in the box office worldwide and magazines, movie magazines say it's the biggest surprise. Nobody mm. saw it coming. Of course, it was quite obvious that a lot of these movies or a few of these movies will make big waves in the international box office. But this is like, yeah, way bigger. Yeah, I, mm. I, I still think this is uh, also one of my favorite movies this year. I had a really good time. Mm -hmm. Um, I have to say, yeah. Triple R is a little better for me uh, overall because yeah. I enjoyed the, the 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 theme of it more and it uh, had a little bit more to say than KGF. But I just love the brutal action in this one, and uh, KGF yes. is is yeah. what the '90s action movies that I love with Arnold Schwarzenegger and, and different uh, great action stars from that time period. Um, the, the, I I always had a good time when I was a kid watching these and. Yeah. KGF and uh, similar movies like that give me that feeling again. And uh, that makes me very happy, puts a smile on my face. And I go into that cinema and uh, scream when uh, Yash title <laughs> card comes up, when he kills yeah. people, destroys stuff and uh, things uh, go crazy. This is just incredible. Mm -hmm. And um, the interesting part of, the, of these movies as well, I mean, you have an intermission, um, you have basically, or you could say there are two movies uh, packed in one. And uh, uh, you have action scenes and you think there's one highlight and then uh, 10 minutes later, there's an mm. even bigger highlight. And that's why I can't even pick one of my favorite scenes. I mean, I love the dialogues, as I said, and I love the action that is in this. But overall, such a great, great movie. Um, let's uh, rate that movie, I would say, huh? Or do you have some fun yeah. facts that we, I mean, we mentioned a couple, but... There is no fun in the life of Yash. <laughs> <laughs> Only violence. Yeah. Violence, violence, <laughs> violence. Exactly. That's that's a great, great scene. But yeah. Um yeah. Tino, let's see your Masala Core Bold. Yeah, I'm at four because I had a, some hard time to wrap my mind around all this hyper masculinity. And of course it's a gangster movie, so I had no real issue with it. Mm -hmm. But of course it's a little bit Said that the cyber masculinity is always like present at 100 of the time. Yeah, I I totally get what you're saying. Um, for me, it's I'm I'm, I'm going the same. I, I I was tending to four and a half, but uh, I think Triple R is four and a half for me, and uh, KGF two is for uh, Masala Crow Bowls, and. I'm I'm thinking the same as you, and I wish there would be uh, more um, more of an shift in kind of way that there is a more diversity in terms of gender and uh, other things in the movies and not just stereotypes and hyper masculinity which we see a lot um i enjoy that for an evening mm -hmm. but um if they want to get on an international level that is seen not as just entertainment and pure action um they mm -hmm. need to do a little bit more in other directions I have seen a couple other Indian films uh, lately, which I really enjoyed. And uh, for example, like the one you that uh, you um, uh, told me to watch, An An Handu, with the blind. Yeah. So, so please be forgiving with us yeah. because it's very hard for us to remember all the titles. So, but it's with a blind uh, piano player. Exactly, and it it feels like mm -hmm. a, as as you said before uh, to, to to me in person, it. Mm -hmm. feels like a Coen brother movie and i think that's really yeah. interesting uh that it came out like that and it was so cool to watch i was uh, i was yeah. i was sitting there watching 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 because it was so good mm -hmm. i really had a good yeah. time yeah yeah and the, the hyper masculinity issue of course beast has the same issue mm -hmm. i think rrr doesn't have this issue because no. they have like like a weak spot for everybody as well and it's the same issue with movies like John Wick as well. So this is not mm -hmm. just like a problem or like an issue these movies yeah. are having, but it's an issue that action movies in general have. Indeed, indeed. So, But, but I think, like, uh, commenting on that, because I, I think uh, when I when I watch um, other Indian movies as well, which are not mm -hmm. as, uh, uh, as action, uh, where the action is not in the forefront and not as mm -hmm. much action as that, they still have that problem. And I would love to mm. see um, a little shift there because I think that's just the, my European way of watching movies and what I personally like uh, when it comes to like more indie flicks and stuff like that, that they do that. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, like everything, everywhere, all at once, which could be basically an Asian uh, movie. 
um, mm -hmm. uh, from the from the starring. But um, yeah, I would love to see more empowerment there. Yeah, and I think we will see more diversity because we basically just get a, a very very tiny glimpse into inside the Indian movie industry because we are always or right now we are dependent on which movies are actually shown in mm -hmm. Germany and of course these are basically only blockbusters and if we would only see blockbusters from US we would have the same perception that there's not a lot of diversity and stuff like that so I think the our yeah basically our view on movies will be a lot more wider when we see a lot of different movies from India, mm -hmm. but that also means that a more German people need to watch Indian movies. Indeed, people. So come out uh, and join us here in Berlin or other places in Germany uh, by yourself uh, when Indian movies are in the cinema. A couple are coming up. Uh, Runway 34, or was it was 34, right? 34, yes. Yeah, Runway 34 is coming up soon uh, with a release. Uh, we are going to watch so, it on Saturday and then uh, yeah. on Sunday. So I haven't seen the other 33, but I don't think that is a problem. I don't think so either. But yeah, yeah. but there, there, there are some other movies coming up um, yeah. and we're going to have some trailer uh, reactions uh, from, uh, for those mm -hmm. movies. Uh, Hero Panty 2. Do two, dos, yes. <laughs> two. All, yeah. all, all the numbers in all the languages uh, with Tiger... Tiger, I've got apps for days. Shroff, uh, <laughs> uh, we're gonna we're gonna do a trailer reaction for that, and also I hope I'm not gonna butcher this. Bul Bulaya, two, also a sequel, mm -hmm. and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna react to those movies, and uh, for you in in, in a, a episode that will also be on YouTube or maybe if it's shorter, I guess on uh, other other or other social media platforms, but you will, you will see some content. So keep an eye <laughs> peel for that. Um, yeah. Do you want to see us out, Tino, or should I? No, you. Okay. I, that, I will do it. You then. are the host. <laughs> I'm the host. You, you're the co-host, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. But, but yeah, you're a little you. more familiar with hosting stuff. Okay. I got yeah. you. I got you. So, uh, Thank you so much, people, for joining us here on our uh, inaugural episode of uh, the Masala Crowd podcast. Um, I hope we gave you a good time and some entertainment. And uh, please do not uh, forget to subscribe us on the social media platforms and also on YouTube. That helps a lot. A like is also very appreciated. And uh, leave us even a rating uh, on the podcast pl uh, platforms like Spotify, iTunes, because that helps us to give you some really cool content. And we are planning some really cool stuff, even live events in the future. So stay tuned for that. And we'll see you next time at Masada Crowd. <laughs> stay tuned. Bye-bye.